and welcome to newslaundry.com. Uh, today we have with us Abhishek Saha. Abhishek uh, has been a reporter for a while now. He's reported with the Hindustan Times from 2015 to 2018 in Kashmir and then moved on to report for Indian Express from Gohati, where he's based out of right now. Uh, so earlier this year, Abhishek actually authored a book called uh, No Lands People. It's the untold story of Assam's NRC crisis. Yeah, so I want to start uh, by sort of uh, going back to when you moved back to Gohati, right? So you went from Kashmir, you moved back to home, and it had been nine years, as you say in your introductory note, uh, you were going back home after nine years. So what, uh, what was it like to go back home? Was it, were you going back to a politically familiar situation or was it almost more alien than moving to a to a new city uh, the thing which you are asking uh, to answer that you know it it was the the city had sta- it's changed and the state had changed and um, it's also when you have a i personally feel that when you have a kind of a guarded uh, socially guarded growing up you know then you are uh, it's uh, then you don't see a place how you see it as a journalist when you deal with very difficult political, uh, socio-political issues on a day-to-day basis. Uh, so that happened. Basically, this is um, since uh, since May 2018 when I joined. Um, this these three four years have been uh, the time when I basically um, learned about the about my home state, and I uh, basically uh, came to understand the. Uh, the difficult questions which uh, which are there which are prevalent there as i as i write in the introduction of the book that uh, you know middle of 2018 when i come then uh, the preparation of the nrc was the story was the biggest story well actually i was going to ask you because as a reporter did you did you sort of foresee that you know you were going to witness such an unprecedented time in assam did you did you have that foresight or no, I, I uh, no, to be very, uh, very honest, I, I didn't make that calculation when making the mm-hmm. move because, but of course, after Kashmir, I wanted a challenging assignment. I, I was seeking opportunity and this opened up. So you uh, talk about the detention center in Assam and, uh, and I know that there's multiple ways to talk about it. There's, there's human rights law that you can refer to. There's uh, speeches, there's the amnesty report, but you chose to tell us the story of the detention facility through uh, one woman and, and a couple of women, but one woman which really stuck through. Um, her name is Momiron Nessa, if I'm pronouncing it right. And she spent 10 years there. Uh, and you you meet her and you're reporting her story. Uh, I'm curious as to why was it important for the reader to uh, learn about the detention center through Nessa's story, right? Why are we why are we understanding the detention facility and what it does, what it is, what it does to Nessa, not just to Nessa but also to her family, right? And you tell us that story through her. Why why is she so important for us to uh, meet in this book? I wanted to look at stories wherein the pers- uh, a person has had been lodged in this detention in the detention centers for a longer period of time because you know that period of time also gives you a vantage point to look at the imbroglio in which the lives of these declared foreigners are because um, Bangladesh won't accept them and therefore there is no deportation and India says that they are foreigners so they are basically rendered stateless. So to explore that kind of a limbo, uh, to explore that um, how stagnant that position becomes legally, uh, I I uh, I looked at characters. Uh, I looked at people who have spent uh, a, a much longer periods, you know, in detention center and. Uh, Momira Nessa was one of such characters. I also want to go to something you point out to us towards the end of the book, right? Yeah. Which I thought was uh, a very, very interesting uh, nuance for everyone to understand that the the anger was not just pro CA and anti CA. Even within the anti CA outrage, and your your chapter is actually titled "Outrage." There is a difference, and there's a nuance uh, 
uh, and you tell us how the Indian liberals discourse uh, is that this is discriminatory towards a Muslim and unconstitutional, but the anger in Assam is far more complex. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about this difference and also at how you tapped into that difference? No, tapping into that difference. I mean, when you are reporting from Assam, it's the, mm -hmm. that's what you are reporting. That's what people are telling you. That's what. So yeah. the, the the difference in the anger, which I say, is that the 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 anger was rooted in multiple uh, very complex issues, as you rightly said. You know. So, for example, the the opposition here was not uh, was not about uh, like elsewhere in India that why were Muslims not included in the ambit of the CAA. But here that was uh, uh, mo more than that, or, you know, the, the most important points were different. The most important points was that. As a reporter, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what that experience was like for you to go from one extreme to the other. Uh, and what it meant to to be reporting as an insider and outsider was what, did is it something you had to constantly you know consider and think through while reporting and your own identity being uh, deeply involved in your in your job as such. You are very conscious that uh, and you are made conscious that that there are lines wherein the wherein your the journalist's Id own identity um, is questioned or is. Uh, is basically looked at very crucially. Now, uh, in Kashmir, I was, you know, I was reporting on how youths are angry and pelting stones and how, uh, how they're picking up arms uh, in rebellion against the Indian establishment. And uh, of course, it's a, like a, uh, a, a hardcore crisis, you know, a, a hardcore conflict zone. And then I basically, uh, uh, as you said, when I come here, then I realized that there were. Mufat Khoro, Muft me it night milega. To watch the full unedited interview, you have to subscribe to News Laundry and pay to keep news free. Because when the public pays, the public is served. We depend on you and not on advertisers. So go to www.newslaundry.com slash subscription and subscribe and get all our unedited interviews our special video shows, comics, and everything that's behind the paywall. Remember to subscribe to News Laundry, you pay just about 10 rupees a day. That's less than, well, no, a cigarette. And smoking is injurious to health. So subscribe and watch the full interview. We want to bring you the stories that matter, whether it be through interviews, round reports, videos, or podcasts. So if you believe in our vision, do head over to our website, newslaundry.com, and click on the subscribe button.